Hi, folks. Midweek insights here on a Wednesday. Matt Noyce, good to be with you. One Degree Outside Weather Network, OneDegreeOutside.com. Boy, the 24-hour observed rainfall map looks a lot different than it did 24 hours ago, doesn't it, right? We did not pick up that much in the way of rain over the last 24 hours. Thank goodness for those folks in northern New England. But you know what? You're going to have more downpours to deal with today, and I think that map's going to look very different again getting into tomorrow. Here's why I say that. Water vapor, sure, it's a great tracer in the atmosphere, but showing up in white and green, that's the moisture in the atmosphere. There's a lot of it over us. As a matter of fact, in northern New England in particular, we've accumulated enough moisture in the atmosphere that it's about twice the normal levels for this date. So what that means is it's going to be very efficient rain production. When it, when it rains, it pours, essentially. And today we've got a disturbance coming. It's not well defined. This is upper level atmospheric energy. And so you've got it in oranges and yellows. You don't see a lot over us, but there is a dip, what we call a trough, that represents a disturbance that's rippling through the northeast today. That will help to focus some of the showers and storms and downpours that develop, particularly in the fact that we have so much moisture in the atmosphere. Thursday, there's a break in the action. Not much going on. Maybe an isolated storm. Generally, a decrease in humidity as well. Here comes a huge disturbance with a lot of energy that's packed into it through the Midwest as we get into Friday. That's going to be a prolific, severe weather producer out there. But notice little energy rides ahead of it. We think that after a fairly quiet daytime hours on Friday, by Friday evening, we start to get the uh, new storms developing through Connecticut. And then the remainder of southern New England becomes vulnerable to it Friday evening and night. There may be some storms that kind of follow each other for some localized flash flooding, particularly in Connecticut, out of that. And once we get to Saturday, you're out ahead of this big disturbance. It's kind of a drawn-out pattern that continues to feed in the moisture. Saturday, it's southern New England that gets twice the normal amount of moisture in the atmosphere and has the greatest chance for some heavy downpours. So what's happening at the surface is kind of a reflection of all that's going on aloft. You can see the clouds, radar showing where precipitation is. But the biggest thing for me is when I analyze the map and I see, okay, there's a warm front and a cold front, and we're in between. We're in what's called the warm sector. But a lot of times we do, we do get rotating, uh, turning winds with height in this area. So downpours are the biggest concern for today, but certainly some isolated damaging wind and the potential to, uh, to watch some of the storms on radar to make sure the rotation inside those storms doesn't become tight enough to be concerning for a tornado. It, it's very low probability today, but not impossible. Notice again, that greatest flood threat uh, is in central Vermont to central and northern New Hampshire. I got to tell you, our proprietary data we're building here at One Degree Outside, we don't have it worked into this graphic system yet, but uh, it's putting out three and a half inches of rain around places like Roxbury, Vermont over the course of today into tonight. So something to keep in mind. Then the rain chance drops significantly as we get into Thursday, even Friday during the day. As I mentioned, I think it's Friday evening that you find that stuff fired up again and the rain chance goes up for the weekend, which does not mean the weekend is unsalvageable. All right, let's go Go ahead and dive into it. First of all, we'll start out with Thursday. You've got a cold front that's uh, just clearing through us here. This does lower humidity Thursday through a deep layer of the atmosphere, which is why we don't think there's a lot in the way of showers and storms Thursday. The better uh, kind of coverage of them is across central and northern Maine. The rest of us may be an isolated shower or storm that develops in the afternoon. The humidity does come down a bit. You'll notice it most on the mountains and hills because it's actually drying out aloft more than it is at ground level. It still feels at least to some extent humid for a lot of the rest of us. From Friday, remember, I think during the day you're doing pretty well. It's going to be Friday evening into the night that we try to fire up some showers and storms and downpours in western Connecticut, western Mass, and then maybe into the remainder of southern New England. So that Saturday probably is one of these days that starts out with showers, and then you get this little break where it's not beautiful. You've got a lot of clouds, maybe breaks the sun, it's really, really humid, and then pop, pop, pop. As you go through the midday and the afternoon, you generate more and more in the way of showers, downpours, thunderstorms. Saturday is the day that southern New England ends up with twice the amount, uh, the normal amount of moisture in the atmosphere and therefore has the greatest chance of seeing some of those real heavy downpours as well. We think Sunday is a more traditional day of just kind of developing showers and storms the deeper into the day that you go. So Saturday has already been highlighted as a flash flood risk, particularly in the western part of central and southern New England. We'll see if there's an expansion eastward of that as we get closer to it. Want to keep you updated on the tropics, just so you know, no real change to the overview, right? Yesterday, there were not many thunderstorms with this disturbance because I showed you it was surrounded by Saharan dust and dry air. Uh, today, we're starting to fire up some more of those and still a 60% chance of development out of this. Actually, the thought process is as it reaches the Bahamas and just off the southeast U.S. coast during the course of the upcoming weekend, early in the weekend, 
that may be when it has the best chance of development. And that actually shows up here too. Tropical conditions where the red is most favorable, both wind aloft and uh, in ocean temperature as well. Notice this weekend, you got a big area of highly favorable conditions that's from the Bahamas to the southeast, and that is the time and area of concern. I got to tell you, the jet stream still looks the same as it did in the insights yesterday, which is to say there is a brief period of time when that storm will be developing somewhere around the Bahamas heading into the start of the weekend where we do have the jet stream winds pointed right up the eastern seaboard. However, that window is short. By the time we get to the end of the weekend and early next week, let's go to Monday, the westerlies come ripping in. And as long as you can rip the westerlies across the northeast, you aren't going to get a storm to come up in here. So the only way we'd have to worry about it in New England is if it stalls out entirely uh, and waits for the westerlies to die down again. Um, it, or otherwise, I mean, you'd have to have some massive change in the pattern. So that's why for New England, it's not overly concerning at this point. Certainly the southeastern United States, uh, it's a bit of a precarious setup there, right? Because it's going to become right at you. But nonetheless, in terms of predicted high temperatures tomorrow, Thursday, remember the dew point is down a little. Um, you'll notice it in spots, but at the same time, it's still going to be hot. And some of you will still say it's humid. It will be. The dew point is still going to be going to be in the 60s for most of us. An isolated shower or storm, not a big deal. Friday, again, not a lot of action after we really on Thursday night stay muggy. So I don't expect a lot to be happening for us on Friday. We get up to about 90. The only thing is, remember, Friday evening might be a different story because this stuff out of New York tries to build into particularly western parts of southern New England may result in some Friday evening or night flash flooding in spots. Saturday, we talked about that shower or those showers around in the morning, uh, perhaps a lull, and then the thunderstorms fire up more again in the afternoon, but I don't want to get too fancy on timing at a couple of days out because I know a lot of you have plans. I think the bottom line is we may be able to salvage a few hours on Saturday. Sunday, again, perhaps that more kind of traditional thing where the deeper into the day you go, the greater the chance of showers and storms to bubble up. But either way, it's humid all weekend long. Pan mass challenge riders. I think your best hope uh, is that if you can, you know, get going after maybe those morning showers, we'll see how they time out on Saturday. You might be in some of them, uh, but the heavier stuff, hopefully not till later. But you have to be ready for what's going to end up being a really humid ride. You can see that in the dew point forecast. It remains elevated through the weekend. And then next week, if you're looking for something a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable, the dew point temperature does drop uh, at least at times. Okay, don't forget, if you want the 14 day or to track the storms today, grab our app. You can get that on the App Store or Google Play. Just search noises one degree outside weather. I hope you enjoyed these deeper dives. There's, again, a lot to get into today. There's just a lot of meteorology going on right now, but this is the science behind the forecast that you see in the app. All right, make it a great rest of your day.